Welcome back to Edwards for another fun little class. My name is Daisha. I uh, work in the floral department here at Edwards where we make all kinds of fun stuff and um, hopefully you guys will really enjoy this project. It's a great project for kids. We've got little ones at home who are having a little cabin fever this winter. So we're going to make a, a bog, a mini bog for carnivorous plants. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and begin building it and as we go I'll explain some things about uh, carnivorous plants so that you can be, be as successful as possible with your bog. So step one will be to put um, just some rocks in the bottom of the container. Just like that. And then, uh, and this is really for drainage because um, it is a bog which tells you it needs to be moist, but we don't necessarily want roots just sitting in the water. So we've put this nice, um, it's about an inch layer of rocks in the bottom to create drainage so the water can be below and the roots can be up out of the water, but still have lots of humidity and moisture within the bog. So then on top of the bog, this is um, the most important ingredient besides the plants themselves. And this is the activated charcoal um, this ingredient will keep your bog from smelling boggy because just that word right bog that doesn't sound like a smell <laughs> sound like something you want to have the smell of in your home but this will keep it smelling what I would describe as green just a fresh um, beautiful green smell like you would smell if you were in a hike next to a creek and this stuff stains quite a bit so when you're working with the charcoal just bear in mind you don't want to have on a white blouse or anything like that or be like on top of a white table because it really does stain. Okay so you're just gonna um, and I will give you the exact amount of charcoal you'll need so you'll just go ahead and put it right over the rocks and spread about and um, and I'm telling you even after months and months of this constant sogginess in your bog it still will smell wonderful like this fresh green smell so that's what the charcoal's for and if for some reason you're getting um, a boggy icky smell then you probably have too much water in your bog and you need to just cut back on the moisture because if there's too much moisture you might start to have um, mold or other bacteria growing but if you keep the water line sort of down by the rocks and the moisture imbalance then you should it shouldn't be any trouble at all okay so the next step will be um, in your kit you're gonna get this uh, beautiful live moss, the sheet moss, and go ahead and I've already done this, I got it all wet, and then just squeeze it out like a sponge so that it's uh, moist and ready to go. And you'll have uh, more than enough of this, probably extra, so you don't have to use it all. And you'll notice we're not gonna put any soil um, in this project at all because the carnivorous plants really prefer um, nutrient poor soil so if we had if we put beautiful um, our normal nursery soil in here with the compost it would just cause uh, bacteria and it wouldn't be mimicking the natural environment of the carnivorous plant where they grow in actual bogs there's not a lot of soil buildup it would sort of all be washed away they would be living off um, decaying logs and mosses and things like that so that's essentially the environment that we're, we're attempting to create here so you're going to take your moss right on top of the rock and um, charcoal and just put it in there like a little pillow just like so and I want a little bit of room up here at the top so I don't want your moss like clear up here right we want it sunk down in a bit to create that terrarium effect that's going to keep a little more humidity um, in your bog terrarium okay so then the next step is to add your little plants and so you're gonna get three little carnivorous plants in your kit. And um, let me tell you what they are. So this is a little pitcher plant. And this is a trumpet plant. And this is the Venus flytrap. So different varieties of carnivorous plants prefer more or less water. Some are what they call flood resistant and some are less so. So all of these guys um, will tolerate, they're like sort of mid-road. So what we're gonna do when we go to um, put these in 
is the Venus flytrap, I feel like, is the one plant that would prefer to be propped up perhaps a little less in the flood zone than the other ones, which you might put in a little deeper. And we're going to go ahead and just keep them in their little pots. There's no need to take them out. Um, they are packed in here with more uh, uh, moss, and that's all they're packed with. And um, the little pot sort of ensures their drainage, right? And that also what this does is if you happen to have overwatered or um, your, your bog and your plants are not thriving because they've had too much water, you can just pop them right out and let them dry out a bit. So it's sort of a backup emergency plan for you as well. So you're going to nestle that down until you fill the rocks. And with the Venus flytrap, you'll see I'm leaving the lip up a little bit higher. I don't want to sink it down in such that the, the little um, traps are crowded by the moss. I want, I want it to have plenty of room. And then um, the next guy, and I would say this is like the one that will stay up the highest. And then this guy go a little bit deeper. And then the third one, the deepest yet. So this guy will just tuck right in there and the moss can come right up to the edge because we don't want to see the, the little pot, right? But we know it's there for safety. And that's just right. See, so it's grazing the moss, but not like sitting in the moss. Okay, and then the, the little trumpet um, carnivorous plant will go in the back here. And again, I'm just like, if the moss is a sh solid sheet, you just rip it, rip a little hole in it to place your plant in. And this one can go down a bit deeper. Um, he, he likes a little more flood zone, so to speak, to stay a bit moister. And if you keep it nice and moist, you'll have less of the little uh, dried bits on the edges. They like that extra humidity. So you might have to kind of scooch the rocks a little to get them right down there where you want and then bring the moss just sort of tucked right up around the edge so we don't see the little pot. So you'll see on some of these carnivorous plants, um, for instance, like this little uh, fly trap right here, this is a dead piece, right? And it's black. But when I pull on it, it doesn't just come right off. So I'm tugging this plant, it's still attached. And um, when you trim it, it, do it doesn't look right. Uh, so just leave it. If there's actually a dead piece that needs to be removed, when you pull like that, it'll just come right off and you won't be yanking on the plant. So definitely remove debris like that when it's ready, but don't force it too soon. You just kind of have to be patient and wait. So I'm going to come in here with this extra moss and just cover up the little pot where I see that it's exposed nice and gently like that. And even little tiny pieces like this even to really cover that edge of the pot so that you can't tell that they're in their little individual pots, just like that. We'll take a moment and do that. And um, you may like to put like um, a little stone or um, I think like um, maybe a branch with some moss or lichens looks natural to me in a bog. I'm gonna send some little decorative bits for you. You may use them or not if you wish. That's your creative decision. So there, so at this point, you think you've got that container pretty well hidden. Just a little more over here with the moss. There we go. So then um, in your kit, you'll get some other fun decorative stuff. So let me show them. We're going to um, get a little bit of this um, reindeer moss, this pretty chartreuse color. Um, the moss, the sheet moss that's in the bog is actually going to turn, it's not going to stay this bright green color, eventually it will turn the, a darker color and at that time you're, this you know bright green chartreuse moss will really pop more. And even though it's moist, um, I don't know, I don't really know why it does that, but it always sort of turns darker despite being kept moist. Okay, so you're going to sneak a little bit of reindeer moss in here and there as you like. And then also, if you, there's a couple colors. I think in this one, I'm just gonna use the green. I prefer that. Add a little bit like that. And then you'll also have some lichens, which are kind of fun. This is, um, these grow naturally in the forest along um, trees and rocks, that sort of thing. So you can just add a little bit of that in some of the 
blank space. I, I tend to work in threes. I like that scale. Just like so. And then, um, Arch Kit will also have, oh, I'll send a few of, of the, these um, fun little branchy things with the moss sticking to them, and you can kind of work those in anywhere you like. So they just look kind of cool, like something you might find in a bog. And then, last but not least, you'll get a little critter, maybe a little dinosaur. I'm thinking dinosaurs. I feel like dinosaurs are appropriate for a carnivorous bog. And that's it. So, caring for your uh, bog moving forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this so you guys can see about how much water I'm gonna add. And I will um, make mention that when you're watering, if you, you wanna use distilled water, like bottled water, um, or you can also pick up um, the little aquarium drops that um, will make, that will fix the pH for the water. So that, well, I mean, tap water technically is fine. However, um, over time, the, salt and other minerals can build up so that's why we suggest that you use a filter filtered water or distilled water and um like i said you can invest in a little um container of the aquarium drops and you just put in like two or three drops in a cup of water let it sit for five minutes before you add it to any plants really the little uh, bottle of aquarium drops should last you like four years you won't it's not something you'll have to go out and purchase more of so I'm gonna go ahead and water it. So what we're looking for when we water the uh, bog is just to have like the lower half of the rock area have water in it. So I'll just come in right from the side here and put some water in and let it sit. That's just right, just like that. And you don't have, I mean, like once a week, if you go ahead and add a little water, um, that should be plenty. Sometimes um, in the winter months, um, we have our heaters on and your home is extra dry. Um, you may want to keep that uh, in mind and keep your eye on the water. You don't want to let um, your bog dry all the way out ever. Um, but you know, a good watering should last at least a week or two. So if, you have to, if you're out of town or whatever, not a big deal. So say you're finding your home is just so dry and um, you're getting some little dried tips. You can just take some, a little saran wrap and make a little humidity tent and, try, and, and, and like nurse your bog essentially for, for a few weeks until um, you know weather improves and it stops being so arid and dry in your home, like when you're not using your heater so much. Um, so that's something you can do as a way of caring for your bog if you notice that it's just too dry in your home um, in the winter. You don't need to feed your bog. Uh, I mentioned before that they like nutrient poor soil and uh, they don't want to be fed like you can purchase mealworms or actual like crickets to specifically feed your uh, carnivorous plants um, they would eat like one bug a month they don't need to eat, eat a whole lot and they'll find like a little mat or, or something around your house you don't so even if they caught zero bugs they would be fine they'll photosynthesize they have what they need here to survive so you don't need to bring anything in if they catch bugs that's a bonus that's cool that's what you got it for to watch that process happen but you don't want you don't need to um, or necessarily want to go out and get bugs to feed your plant um, they have uh, ways of attracting bugs to them there's they have a little like nectar that smells sweet that attracts uh, bugs. The shape of the plant is also um, geared towards catching bugs, so they know what to do and you can just let them do their thing. Let's talk about light real quick. So they love light. They love bright light, but it needs to be filtered. So if you put your bog in a window where they had direct bright light on them, it could very easily burn um, your carnivorous plants. So um, you, you need to find a room that has good bright light but is filtered. So this isn't a great um, project if you don't have um, good filtered light in your home. And if that is the case, you can get a, a little grow light. They're inexpensive and put it on a timer and, and that's sufficient. So while, you, while they can't be in direct sunlight, it's vital that they do have access to a lot of good filtered light. So any nice bright room should do the trick. In the winter, 
Uh, you could move your um, plant carnivorous plants in nature would experience a cold period, even if it's not freezing, right? They would have a part of the year where they were semi-dormant, where the hours of light are fewer and it's a bit colder. So you can duplicate that experience for your carnivorous plants by moving it um, in a room with only a north-facing window during the winter, if you like. And that, that just sort of simulates the environment that they would be in naturally. And anything you can do with any house plant to simulate the environment that they would um, naturally have is good. Including like um, an open window during fair weather to get breeze and airflow around your plants and anything, literally anything they would experience in their natural environment that you can create in your home will improve their life. Okay, so we talked about light and you don't need to feed them. And you know about the water, so I think you're set up to, to succeed. Okay, I think that's it, folks.